Hello and welcome to M&A Murders and Accusations, the good, the bad, and the ugly of selling your business. We dig into what you need to know and how not to kill the sell of your business. Now here's our host, Rick J. Krebs, Mergers and Acquisitions Advisor. Hello, this is Rick J. Krebs, the M&A Cowboy, coming to you with M&A Murders and Accusations from the mountains of Heber City. I'm really excited about our show today and our guest, Steele. And you're going to have to pronounce your last name so I don't slaughter it, Steele. I've known him for a while, but I... I'm offended. I'm offended. How hard is it to say Krebs? You know, it's just... (laughs) Kazarian. Kazarian. And what nationality is that? It is Armenian. Wow. See, I've never heard Kazarian before, and so it's Armenian. Very cool. But anyway, I've worked with Steele for a while now, and, and we were introduced a while back. And interestingly enough, we both live in the same city. He also lives in Heber City. And so I found that interesting. You know, we're, we're kind of neighbors. And so I'm excited to have him on the show today, excited for what he wants to share and what he's doing. Let me give a little background about this. So years ago, as the listeners know, I'm a mergers and acquisitions advisor slash business broker. We sell businesses. And for years, the way that we went about it is just, you know, we do evaluation. Business owner would come in and say, okay, here's my value. And if it was too low, I'd tell them, okay, here's your here's your multiple, you know, your EBITDA multiple or four or five or whatever it was. I'd say, okay, build your company for a few more years and then let's then let's revisit this and we'll sell you when you're ready. And so That worked, but it was clumsy. I found it was just not the best way to help my clients and business owners prepare. So that's why we started the Utah Chapter of Exit Planners. I've started working with smart people like Steele, who are business advisors and business coaches, and they can move the needle in in huge ways. I'm not talking about incremental change. I'm talking about exponential change. I'm talking about things that just totally transform your business from just being regular business to best in class and and having a big win on this exit because we've got one chance to get it right. You only sell your company one time. Well, generally, <laughs> once in a while, they'll sell them twice and get them back. But anyway, for the most part, you only sell your business one time. We need to get it right and we need to maximize that value. And so having people like Steel to help you with that is so critical to that process and so so much a bigger win in the end. So anyway, with that with that lead in, I'd like to steal, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us something that's cool about yourself that some people may not know. I had to ask my wife, like, you know, I knew you were going to ask that question. I'm like, honey, what's cool about me? I'm like, I don't know what's cool about me. So she reminded me, she's like, oh, you in college, you were an intramural bowling champion. So I'm a bowling league champion. I wasn't the best on the team, but I did have a good streak one time where I had, I think, nine strikes. It was the closest to a perfect game I've ever had. Wow. I know. And it was, but, you know, I've gone downhill ever since. I've gone bowling sensing and I've got this and I can't, I can't replicate. So (laughs) some of my bowling games, if I hit the triple digits, I'm happy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm feeling now, which is like really embarrassing for where I came from. No, but that's what's you know interesting. And, you know, I'm a sixth generation entrepreneur. So I kind of, it was hard finding that sixth generation, but I was bound to find him. He was a farmer. It counts. So yeah, I, it's just in my DNA. It's in my blood. I've been around it a long time. My dad sold his business. They had 3,400 employees. It was a brick and mortar, but there were offices throughout the world. Uh, my grandpa, big developer and business guy, and you, you just name it. So it's kind of, it flows. And, you know, when I was younger and I had my first, I remember owning the first business. And I remember I gave, I, I invested all of my money, like all of our savings, my wife and I, with this company. And it was a home a house call business, medical business. And my partners, I had two partners. One partner was the doctor. I was the business strategy and scope and all that. And the other partner was like an investor Mm -hmm. and he had a pharmacy and other things. So like, we were like, Hey, this is a really good relationship. And I remember the day that I, I gave them money and I'm like, Oh my gosh, honey, I came home. Like I have made it. I made it. I got an owner of a business. Like, this is incredible. 
And then just down a short while down the road after I paid my money to be an equal partner. It was so important to me. Six weeks, like a few weeks after that, the investor guy goes, you know, I'm out. I'm like, out? out? What do you mean you're out? I just gave you everything I had. And he goes, well, hey, everybody has the right to make a bad deal. Ooh. And I'm like, what? And so that was the start of my own entrepreneurial journey. <laughs> and since then, I've built several businesses. Some have been really great, successful, multi-million dollar ventures. We had multiple locations, multiple states. And other ones were traumatic and very difficult and dark days. But yeah, that's kind of my background. And then as I did that, another implementer, EOS implementer in Houston, Texas, that's where we were living at the time, introduced it to me and said, hey, you should check this out. I think you, uh, you really like it. And that it was no looking back for me. It was right on my alley. I was so excited. I get a train, wow. I get a facility and coach. And that's what I do. So that's Neat. that's kind of the background there. Nate, so you you mentioned EOS implementer. Let's give a little bit of background on EOS. So one of the Exit Planning Institute summits, and right next to my booth was the founder of EOS, Gino. And I got to know him, got to meet him. Great guy. I got to listen to him speak. And I had never heard of, of EOS before. So tell us what is EOS and what does that company stand for? Tell us about that organization that you're with. Yeah, Gino is incredible. He's the founder of it, you know, and it's been around for a long time. And so EOS stands for the Entrepreneurial Operating System. It's not a software. It is a framework with simple, practical tools to operate and build your business. And it is just, it's, it's simple and it gets results and it's real, right? It's not theory. And really it's getting, helping these business owners and their teams to get vision, alignment on the direction of the company, where they're going, how they're going to get there, getting that traction where everyone's executing at a high level, not just leadership team, but everyone in the organization. And then healthy is making sure everyone's truly being honest that we're open, that we are a real team behaving as a team should to be healthy and strong, healthy and smart. And so there are, you know, there are 700 implementers worldwide now Wow. And they're preaching the gospel of EOS, really just trying to help the world, right? There are over 200,000 companies right now worldwide running on EOS. And mm. the big, big target in the US is that we have a million businesses, you know, by 2030 running on EOS. That's our big goal, big target to try to help as many companies get more control of their business, more value. Yeah. So that's kind of that in, that, in a nutshell. Wow. I love it. And what I see with business owners a lot of times Steel is, you know, they'll be like you, they're all excited and they build a business and their wife's doing the books at the kitchen table, you know, and they're starting and this bootstrapping it, right? And and we love it. As entrepreneurs, we just, we live that and we love it. And this business grows and grows. And then, and then I see that sometimes that thing that, that we love becomes a monster that consumes our lives. And I see many business owners that work in the business but not on the business and, and they're doing the tactical, I mean, day to day, you know, they're putting out fires and, and the problem is they're so good at it that they have success, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, and, they, and they make money and they're feeding the kids and they're going on vacations and they get out of that bootstrap and how are we going to pay our mortgage to, oh, wow, you know, let's go spend a couple of weeks in Hawaii this year. Let's, you know, and so they start to have success, but I see that they don't have happiness with that success. And what I mean by that is their business becomes all consuming to them and it just, it steals their life in a lot of ways. It takes their time. And, and so because they're so busy working in the business, not on the business, the business will start to plateau a little bit and it will stick. And I've seen this time and time again, where business owners, the business will grow, 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 and then it hits a ceiling boom, and it just stops. And that ceiling is the business owner's expertise. Right, they don't know what they don't know, and as a business owner, you got to be in, you got to be an accountant, you got to be an attorney, you got to be an operational guy, you got to be a counselor for your employees, you got to be all of these things, right? And you're really good to a certain level, and then you just hit that ceiling and you plateau out, 
and you don't know how to do anything different. So you just work harder. But as you work harder, you don't see the same results that you did early on. And so having someone like yourself that can come in from the outside and see the business through the goggles of an outside person and, and help them gain alignment and, and values and core value systems. And also what I see through EOS is that the management team is happier because you help them define what their roles are and what they're supposed to be doing, right? <laughs> and I'll let you get into it. I don't want to steal the show, but this is what I'm seeing from it. And it's an investment to do so, right? It's a time investment. And people will fight like hell to do what they what they love to do. And they'll fight like hell to stay in their rut. But it takes these outside smart people to just pull them out of those ruts and let them start to see the sunshine again and have some quality of life and and see this business grow how it should. You nail on the head on everything, right? Because we get burnout. We are the business. And you, and when you are the business, that's a huge risk. And it increases the risk, decreases the value. When you're going to exit, the people are going to buy your company. They don't care about your blood, sweat, and tears. They don't care that it's your baby. They're not paying. There's no multiplier for how much love you put into it. You, Because you're the business, hit a ceiling. We teach that all the time. I assure you, you hit a ceiling. And if you're like, well, I want to double the business, you can't double your time. You're already right. burning the midnight oil. You want to double and grow, but you're stuck. And if you don't do certain things, you will either stay stuck or you will die. Your business will die. And we have got to break through the ceiling. And there are simple things to do. And part of that is, right, like you mentioned a little bit of like people getting their, I have some my whiteboard handy, right? But their, their roles and really clear getting right people in the right seats. What does the right seat look like for the organization? What is the right person for our company? And really getting clear on it because one of the things that you have to do that's really hard for these those who are trying to grow is to delegate. It is so hard to let go because it's our baby. We built this and we're so good at it. We're making money. But now it's like, well, no, like what if I let go and then it it fails? Or we, we don't let go, we don't delegate because we might not really trust that we have a right person in the right seat. If we did, we're more confident to say yes. Or we don't let go because we're like, you know what? Oh, it's going to just take me so much longer to train someone and they're going to have to do it and they're not going to do as great as I can. You know what? I'll just do it. And it sounds fine, but you multiply that times 100 items and now you, again, you're overworked, you're overwhelmed, you're burning out and you... And you kind of hit on it. You said you're not as happy. I've seen you lose, you lost the zest. You lost that zeal, the joy and excitement of the business. And also you're not doing the things you love anymore because now you have all this fulfillment. And then you start hiring people and you're like, God, to manage the people. And now I'm all here in the weeds doing things I don't love and I'm not great at. And I should be spending all this time over here where I have my zest that I'm a visionary I'm growing the business. I'm looking around corners. I'm meeting new people. But no, I'm stuck doing all these other things. So we have to learn. In order to get to the zeal, the zest, continually having that, doing things we love and are great at, we have to start to delegate the things that we don't love or we're not great at or we don't like that we're not great at. And start to do this and start getting right people in the right seats to build extensions of ourselves so that we can scale exponentially with having fewer and fewer hours, not more and more hours. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I think business owners, before we go into the detail that I, I want to share a couple of things, I think business owners are a little bit lonely. And the fact that they get to that point where they're just working so hard, oftentimes they don't even share that with their spouses. And so one of the things that we've learned is that they don't know who to trust. They're getting bombarded with people and getting bombarded with offers and that, and they just simply don't know who to trust and where they could go. I attended an event recently with it. He was an Olympian in gymnastics back in the early 80s. And he said that what he wanted to do, because he set the goal of getting a gold medal, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to work harder than everyone else. And he says, I'm going to do it faster. So he was already spending like 12 hours in the gym a day, right? Working and he he's decided he was going to work harder. And so he's like, wait a minute, simple math. 
I cannot, I physically cannot spend 24 hours a day in the gym. Can't do it. And so what he decided, he's like, well, I'll do a little bit. I'll do a little bit more. And so he worked a few extra minutes. But with business owners, what happens, they just work more and more and more and get less and less return. It just, it starts to get burnt out. Well, maybe you can't do great work. Yeah, you can't do it. Slow down to work on the business, to take clarity breaks, to have a free day, to just exist, to just think, to be creative, to innovate, to breathe, to enjoy life. And you'll do better work. (laughs) Exactly. Yep, you certainly will. (laughs) So share with us, share with us an example of a recent business owner that you helped and what you saw. You know, a lot of times I'll share a generic and then I'll share specific, but there's a theme at the end. So I do full day sessions with my clients as I work with these business owners. Mm -hmm. And at the end of each session, I always ask, all right, hey, where's your head at? How are you feeling? Ask each single one of the, every leadership team member, including the business owners, they're often there. Most of the time I hear this, I feel overwhelmed, but I feel empowered. Well, I feel, I feel clear. We have never been this clear in the past 10 years in business. I've never been this aligned. I had one client, she said in the middle of the session, Because we're trying to figure out right people, right seats, and this model of what they were doing. And I'm not a consultant. I'm helping them get it to facilitate, get clarity. She just said, I just need to pause. You just made me a million dollars right there. Because what it shifted to. And and I'm like, oh, that's awesome, right? Like, cool. And she's like, no, seriously, like I I can't believe it. And I get I get people who are like, you know what, we don't like outside people. You know, I'm very skeptical, but then at the end, they're just like, this was totally different than I expected. You know, we, I, I mean, I'll be in a session where sometimes it gets tense and people's emotions are high and they're, sometimes they're getting angry. Sometimes they're crying. Some, sometimes they're pointing at me and mad at me. I'm like, that's okay. You can be mad. But like, it's <laughs> part of this process of getting these teams when they've been yelling at each other and angry to get aligned. Mm. I had a bit, I had a business where they're like, we don't trust you. They were saying to the owner, I don't trust you to run this company. The other one said, me neither live in this session. Ooh. Right. And to the owner's credit, they were great. They were listening. They were humble. They were open-minded. And at the end of the session, people were going, sorry about that. Like I, that was my, and we got on the same page. We mm-hmm. figured out why they felt that way. What was the reason? Really digging, pulling back. And they're like, you know what? We've been trying to have this conversation for years. And we just never had it. Because what you do is when you're successful, right? This company is very, very sex- successful. I think it's a nine-figure company. Very successful. But when you're successful, a lot of times what you do is you sweep issues under the rug. Because you're like, you know what? These are not fine. Let's just keep on going. Yeah, we're making money. We're doing well. We won't. We won't have it. We're making money. We're doing well. Like, no, we gotta pull out the rug. We're burning the rug. We're never looking at that rug again. (laughs) And we gotta talk about the real issues and get healthy, because a lot of times business focus just on the smart piece, and they don't talk about the healthy piece Mm -hmm. of being a healthy team, culture, alignment, vision. It's more strategy and numbers. But we've got to be aligned. We've got to make sure everyone's open. We're honest. We're stating the issues. So those are some kind of generics, but also helping them get alignment. And at the end of that day, people are giving each other hugs and saying, hey, sorry about that. And you know what? Like this is, I've been, I've been this on my chest for a really long time. And I'm so, so excited for the next quarter and the next year. So things like that is, wow, it's worth so much. Like you can't put a price to that. That is so cool. So when you go in and you help a business owner, walk us through that process, how it works, how they work with you. Sure. So I do a 90-minute meeting. It's complimentary. In that 90-minute meeting, it's really just to help. It's with the owners and the leadership team. And really it's saying, hey, this is what it is. Like I ask, I have to give a little bit quick back of myself. Um, and then I ask them lots of questions about the company, get a feel but then what I do is I do a deep dive model on the whole EOS model, the six key components, vision, people, data, 
issues, process, traction, and the tools that coincide with it and walk them through and help them see how it can work, not just at the leadership team level, but then now it's how do we do this in every department at every level of the organization? Mm. And then I walk them through, you know, the step-by-step process of what it looks like. So we do full day sessions. So I do a focus day. And in that focus day, we talk about hitting the ceiling, the accountability chart, the structure, getting right people, the right seats live right there. We, we eliminate the old structure and say, what is the new structure for the next six to 12 months? Really get that. We set company rocks, the priority, what to do. We work on a leadership team meeting. That's a powerful leadership team meeting. And then we work on a scorecard, which are like the key indicators for to know the health of the company. Once we do that, 30 days later is vision building day one. We start answering all these eight questions on core values, your core focus, the 10-year target, your three-year picture, your one-year plan, your new rocks, all of that. 30 days later is vision building day two. This kind of sets foundation. And then what we do is quarterly sessions and a two-day annual session. And I run those until they don't need me anymore. Gotcha. How long do you typically, people work with you? A year, six months? Yeah, it's, it's about two to three years. On average, it's two years okay. through everything. We just say have a mental commitment of two years. And it really helps you be shift from being owner-dependent to being leadership team-dependent and process-dependent and, and getting that strong structure in place so that you can grow exponentially and so you got to give it time. It's not a quick turnaround. If someone wants this for a three to six month turnaround, it's not going to happen. It takes time. Gotcha. Well, they've been working on the business for years. Yeah. Sometimes 20 or 30 years. So yeah. it's not like you're going to, you're going to steer the Titanic. <laughs> no, not, <laughs> it not around right away. <laughs> in no way. But I mean, it's like, all right, we're starting. We're getting, we're building the framework to operate. Even when I'm no longer working with them, like they should be running their quarterly sessions and their two day annual on their own. Like that's the point. Is that with or without me, you are running on EOS. Gotcha. And how do people learn more about EPS and how do they get in touch with you? I love what you're saying here, Steele, and I love what you're doing. And we've sent clients over to you and we've had really good success. If they want to work with you, how do we how do they get in touch with you? Can you share a website, email? How they- yeah, they get, my email works. My cell phone works. You can send me a, shoot me a text message. He answers, by the way. I do. I, I do. Oh, hey. So my, my cell phone is 714-595-0696. And then my email is steel.kazarian. So that's S-T-E-E-L-E dot Kazarian, K-I-Z-E-R. I-A-N at EOSworldwide.com. Easy. I'll respond. I always do. Perfect. And you work with businesses all around the country. Even though you're in Utah, you can work with them all around the country, right? Yeah, absolutely. And if and even if I'm not the right fit for them, mm-hmm. I can point them to the right direction to find someone who is. I mean, I, I, not everyone wears the same clown. I get it. It's okay. <laughs> Got it. Love this. Love our conversation and, and appreciate your time today, Steele. This has been very very beneficial. And I think for business owners, steel is someone you're going to want to look at when you're looking at scaling and I'm going to keep sending them your way. Thanks for joining us. M&A murders and accusations, the good, the bad, and the ugly of selling a business. Today, I'm going to talk about, I think it's good. I'm going to say this is the good part. <laughs> a little bit ugly sometimes as you're going through it, but in the end, it ends up being good. <laughs> Thanks, steel, and have a great day. Bye now. Thank you for attending our podcast. We invite you to join us for future episodes of M&A Murders and Accusations, the good, the bad, and the ugly of selling your business. You can also visit us at www.bsalesgroup.com or email Rick directly at rick at bsalesgroup.com.